Hello and welcome to Surgery Secrets, where we go behind the scenes to uncover secrets about surgery you won't hear in the classroom. My name's Stephanie, and today we're sitting down with Dr. Bogdan. Let's get started. So can you tell us your name? My name is Yelena Bogdan. And what's your occupation? I am an orthopedic trauma surgeon, which is a fancy way of saying that I treat broken bones for a living. And where do you work? I work in New York City um, at Jacoby Medical Center. And what does your job entail? So my job involves uh, the care of patients with musculoskeletal disorders. So I'm an orthopedic surgeon, but I have additional subspecialty training, meaning after I did residency, I did additional year of fellowship um, focusing on orthopedic trauma, which is fracture care or broken bones. Because a fracture is the medical term for a broken bone. So my job involves uh, the surgical care and also non-surgical care of fractures pretty much everywhere in the body, except for uh, the spine, the head, and the ribs. Okay, well, you definitely passed the quick fire round. Um, so let's move on to some of our more nitty gritty questions. Okay. Our first question is, who is your biggest influence uh, either in your personal life or your professional career? Um, I would say the biggest personal influence uh, for my personal life would, have, would be my mom. Um, so I'm an immigrant and uh, we came from Russia with pretty much nothing. And she's pretty much been responsible for the success of our family. Um, throughout my life. And uh, she is uh, like 10,000 times more impressive than I could ever be. So I think that she is definitely uh, the number one influence for me in terms of my behavior um, and literally everything else that I do. Uh, my biggest professional influence is my mentor, Paul Tornetta, who is a very famous uh, orthopedic trauma surgeon. He works in Boston. Uh, he was my residency program director and we've remained close um, ever since. Um, basically uh, his work is what inspired me to become an orthopedic trauma surgeon. and. Uh, uh, he and I talk pretty regularly about cases and everything else. And uh, so I, I would definitely say that that would be him. It sounds like you had a lot of different influences and, and positive um, influences in your life as you were going through school and your training. Um, can you tell us maybe the most memorable moment of your training? I would actually say that my biggest, uh, most memorable moment was when I heard uh, Paul, my mentor, when I heard him speak at the OTA, at the Orthopedic Trauma Association, and he got up to present on something. And as I was listening to him speak, I thought, you know what, I want to be like that. I want to be up at that podium too. And just basically being at that entire meeting, kind of uh, looking at all the people and talking to them, and I was still just a junior resident at that time, and I had a very good sense of, you know, these are my people, these are the type of people I'd like to interact with and work with, even within the field of orthopedics, you know, we're a very niche group, and uh, and so I, I was like, all right, this is it, this is what I'm going to do, so I would say that determined the rest of my career and the rest of my life, really, so that would be the most memorable. Have you um, had any recent uh, memorable experiences where you've maybe felt that same sort of inspiration or feeling of belonging or rightness? I mean, I've felt rightness ever since, um, but uh, I actually think there, there was a cool moment recently because uh, one of the one of the things that I remember from residency is doing my very first surgery completely on my own without the help of an attending. And I actually watched one of my residents do the same thing the other day. Uh, and uh, when she was doing her case, uh, I got reminded. Of, so as I was coaching her through it and how well she did, and I was like, man, she's even better than I was at that stage. And I'm like, man, I must be, a, I must be a really good teacher. I'm a better teacher than Paul now because I'm making her even better than he made me. So uh, I, I, uh, I thought that uh, I, I thought it was kind of cool. You know, I came home and I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't even imagine to be able to see like your impact on someone else who's going to be the next generation of, of surgeons and um, medical professionals. So that's amazing. Um, what would you say is one thing that people don't understand about your job? Um, I think people don't understand how truly emotionally rigorous it is and how just physically rigorous and everything else. Uh, ortho in, in general is a very difficult job. Um, ortho trauma in particular is not really for the faint of heart because you don't really have a set schedule per se. It's not like you can say, oh, you know what, we, you know, you with your uh, broken bones sticking out of your skin, you know, at three in the morning, you know, you can wait until, you know, 
uh, until the end of the week when I'm done doing with whatever I'm doing. So whatever, um, whatever I, uh, um, kind of do on a daily basis is not set. And sometimes that's very disruptive to your life because you never know what you're walking into. So I could uh, basically get in in the morning and find out, oh, there's been no accidents, nothing going on. And I'm pretty much free to do research or whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, or I could walk in and say, yeah, I'm going to be operating here until midnight. And then I'm going to go home and start the next day at 6.45 AM or whatever. And I have, there's no such thing as you know, oh, you know what, I'm tired. I, mm -hmm. I need to take a break. Cause if you're the only surgeon there, guess what? Your patients don't care how tired you are. And if you're on call, that's another brings another sort of level of um, complexity because if I'm on call, let's say my, my call is Thursday, for example, Thursday night. So if something happens Thursday night, let's say, you know, I'm sleeping and it's two in the morning and something comes in that actual absolutely needs me. Um, I go in at two in the morning and let's say I operate until five well, I have to start surgery for an entire day again at 7.30. And my patients who need their surgeries done at 7.30, they don't care that I've, that I've been up all night. So, you know, you, you get some coffee and you, you kind of go. <laughs> so uh, I think, yeah, I think definitely that's, uh, that's something that seems to escape most lay people. Um, what would you say is the best part of your job? Trauma in particular attracted me because you have the ability to treat all patients um, all walks of life, all ages. Um, it's very versatile. You know, I can tell you 15 different ways of fixing the same broken bone, depending on the nature of the injury, the type of patient, their medical comorbidities, their social situation, um, and things like that. So just as an example, I had somebody uh, years ago now, um, but I had a patient who uh, had a very complex mangled uh, leg from an accident. And some, you, you can undergo, you know, 20 surgeries and like a year of, of being down and not being able to do anything to try and save this limb. And this particular patient said, you know what, I have to have my job. I can't, you know, I, I can't stay out too long because then I'm going to lose my house. I have no way, you know, I'm the provider for my family. I, you know, I can't be out of work for a year and, um, or however long, you know, like even six months can't do it. So, um, we actually elected and did an amputation. So you amputate below the knee, they get a prosthesis and within like three or four months, he was back at work and got to keep his house and everything else. So I think the complexity, the mental complexity of my job, um, I think is probably the best part. I'm sure it's really nice to see, I guess, like the instant or almost instant impact of your work on the patients and the uh, improvements that you've made to their lives and their situations. Yeah. I mean, it's, the instant gratification is certainly good for somebody who like has, has no patience at all like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of on the flip side of, of this, uh, what would you say is the worst part of your job? I think the unpredictability for sure. And the uh, emotional toll it takes, not just on you, but on your loved ones as well. Um, in residency, I think everybody goes through it because residency is notorious for this. You know, you work 80 plus hours a week and the limit is 80, but almost no one in a surgical residency works 80. They work more. They just don't tell people they work more. Um, but, uh, but, um, you know, you get to miss holidays because you're on call, you know, you have to leave it's, if it's your kid's birthday party and you're on call. I mean, hopefully you're not on call, but if you are and something happens, you got to go. And, um, you know, sometimes there's uh, it takes a toll on your family as well, because they even though they live with you, if they're not in medicine, they can't always understand why is it that you must take that phone call in the middle of dinner or why is it that you know, so you try and you try and sort of compartmentalize it a little bit and try and shield them from it and try not to bring your work home with, with you that I've never been successful at that. So my, <laughs> so my, my family and my friends have kind of learned that work for me comes first. And that's just kind of how it is. It doesn't mean I don't care about them. It doesn't mean, you know, anything except like, this is my calling and this is my life. And, you know, if you want to be with me or around me in any way that's just something you're going to have to understand and accept mm -hmm. i can't even imagine like the demands that you would have uh, on your life as a surgeon and um so we're wondering can you tell us a bit about your support system and what they mean to you i i, I had my mom and my dad as an example obviously being immigrants um and working our way up into the whole american dream thing um watching them 
struggle and succeed. Um, they're both physicians. And so my, uh, or were physicians in Russia and my dad's still one now, my mom runs his practice. And so um, just watching them and having them understand uh, what I'm going through. And even they don't understand exactly um, because residency here is very different. Um, but uh, but uh, they um, have certainly been able to support me through a lot of things. I have a lot of uh, very supportive friends and obviously my husband uh, as well, um, who has been pretty instrumental in both keeping me alive, fed, clothed, and literally everything else. Um, I'd be probably passed out dead in a dumpster somewhere if it wasn't for him, <laughs> because he just, because he he's very, you know, and, and that's one of the things I kind of would say to anyone going into, um, particularly the surgical field. Um, there's a reason why most surgeons, or at least certainly most orthopedic surgeons are male. Um, there's uh, just very, it's, it's very difficult. I think it's a lot easier for a guy because most, you know, in most situations, you know, the, the, the woman is sort of like, kind of like more the domestic one, more taking care of the house. So I think as a female surgeon specifically, I think it's very important to find somebody who can support you, who can kind of take care of those tasks. Now, I'm not saying that means you have to get married or do anything else, like you could hire a maid or whatever like you could but you need some way of offloading those tasks because if you're trying to do both it becomes and there are some women who do both and it's it's just I don't know how they do it so I was fortunate enough to have a husband who actually likes that stuff you know he's very domestic he cooks you know he like loves it he's like the cook in our family um and he kind of takes care of things when I'm when I'm gone I have a dog a rescue dog and uh she um if anybody follows me on Twitter there they they would <laughs> they would have seen her because she's literally like every other post so um she is kind of like my sanity and uh if it wasn't for my husband I would never be able to have her because she's um because she needs to be at home and somebody needs to be at home with her and this is a family member it's not like I can leave her at home by herself for like six hours until a dog sitter comes that's not fair that's 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 a creature with a soul and and emotions um who is not just like you know uh, an object so and he stays with her because he works from home so he works from home he takes care of her anything that happens at home he's there to take care of it that's absolutely invaluable i don't think i could do this um you know i don't think i could do this at all if it wasn't for him or at least it would be very difficult it sounds like you have such a wonderful support system with your friends and your family and your dog. And um, I think we've been talking here at Surgery 101 um, about physician self-care and taking time to um, take care of yourself in whatever way that means to, to you. Um, and so if you weren't doing um, your current job, what kind of career do you think you'd be doing? I really don't think I could do anything else. Um, there was a long time ago in uh, college when I wanted to uh, be an FBI agent or a police officer or something like that, um, because I just liked the series on, yeah, I don't know if you guys are too young for, uh, for court TV, but now it's called True TV or whatever. There was all these like forensic files and all this stuff. I loved, I loved watching that. So I thought it was very cool. So that's what I like kind of wanted to do but my mom's like no you're going to med school first <laughs> and then you can decide then then like once you get your md then you can go join the fbi <laughs> um you know it's like an immigrant if you have any experience with immigrant families and particularly russian families um you know you got to you have a lot of uh, choices you know whatever you want to be when you grow up you can be a doctor or a lawyer that's it that's what you that's what you get um and if you like go into the arts or whatever you better be like you know at the bolshoi theater or you better be like have your work presented at the Met because otherwise <laughs> your ass is going to medical school <laughs> or law school. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, but but honestly, uh, I actually I got very fortunate because within medicine, even within medicine, I don't think anything I don't think there's really anything else that uh, suits me as well as orthopedics. I'm truly in the perfect job for me. I I would never really want to do anything else. I think I think if something happened and I wasn't um, and I didn't have my job anymore, uh, I would probably like find a way of teaching orthopedics somewhere. <laughs> um, or I'd be a stay at home mom. That's kind of what I would do, I think. I guess it's safe to say that you in some way did imagine yourself living your current life. Yeah, I would, I would hundred, I, I don't, uh, yeah, I'm certainly very goal oriented and I always knew what I was going to become. Um, but I, uh, I didn't, some of the steps along the way, I don't think I could have predicted and in the best possible way. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always been the type of person who, you know, call it tunnel vision or anything else. Like I've always had one goal and that was the goal I was going to pursue. 
And so we've reached our last question and it's more of a reflective question. Um, what advice would you give to someone who may be considering your career or um, maybe a career as a surgeon in a different, I guess, um, field? Um, I would say the best way to do it is, I'm assuming this person that you're, this hypothetical person you're talking about is in medical school already, because um, you have to get to med school first. Um, I would say before you pick that as a specialty to to shadow some surgeons, to ask them about their lives and what they're going through. Because like I said, it's not for everyone. Um, and a lot of people go into it with certain expectations that the field will bend to them. Um, and I think that's wrong. I think your patients deserve uh, you know, the best kind of care and you have to sacrifice yourself to take care of them. Um, so uh, I think before choosing this career, people should um, really talk to the people who are in it and see if this is the best fit. And so ironically, now I said I had tunnel vision this entire time, I would actually, my advice would be to avoid tunnel vision and actually explore different careers, uh, especially when you're in medical school to try and take um, a little bit out of every rotation that you do, every medical specialty, when you rotate on it, consider it um, as if it was the field that you were going into. And then you can truly decide for yourself. Because a lot of people go into med school um, thinking uh, that they're going to be one type of person like or one type of specialist uh orthopedics is very notorious for that you know like they come out of the womb already like wanting to be an orthopedic surgeon because you know oh i like sports and that's what i'm going to be and then they go in and then they're like huh maybe this isn't for me and that's totally fine so you should find whatever makes you happy um and a, a lot of the time that changes as you grow and as you um kind of decide what the rest of your life is going to look like um when you finish med school. So yeah, I would say my biggest advice was do not develop tunnel vision. <laughs> Keep your options open and <laughs> see what you like. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Bogdan for joining us today and uh, joining us on Surgery Secrets. And it was a pleasure to have you on our series. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. And there you have it, everyone. Join us next time for another exclusive look into surgery today. And follow us on LinkedIn for new Surgery Secrets episodes. And check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And for more information on Surgery 101, head to our website, surgery101.org. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.